admittance into Seattle U. Um, we're very excited to have you this upcoming fall. Um, today, uh, you're meeting with the undergrad Albers academic advising team, and we're going to go over a few things um, that we need to do prior to registration. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to introduce uh, the entire team. Um, second, we're going to kind of go over um, what your program overview would look like, getting a little more familiar before we start planning for courses and sections for our registration workshops. And then after that, we're just going to kind of go over uh, a quick little checklist of, of things that we should be doing or things that you most likely have questions about so we can help you out there as well. Awesome. And David, there we go. So I can go first. My name is Ann Kolpitz. I'm one of the advisors in Albers. I've been here about three years. And um, when I was little, I did really like my dolls. So they went with me to the photo shoot. Um, now, I guess when I'm not at work, I like, especially in the summer, I like to go kayaking, do a little hiking, like to bake a lot um, and read. So I'm hoping to have kind of a relaxing summer, get to do some of those things. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the orientation. Uh, I'm David Carter. Uh, I've been in Albers for about three years now. Uh, this photo was taken for my kindergarten graduation in Wenatchee, Washington, which is about a two and a half hour drive east of Seattle. Um, I really like to be very active, so I enjoy hiking, uh, traveling, and working out at the gym. So if you uh, go to the gym at Seattle U, you may see me uh, when I'm off work. So welcome, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, David. And hello, everybody. My name is Dominic, and I am one of or the newest member to this team. Um, I'm about to wrap up my first year here at Seattle U. Um, so definitely learning along with you all. Um, fun fact about this picture, which I didn't know until <clears throat> I talked with my mom last night. Uh, the picture on the front is um, I'm from San Diego, so it's a Chargers sweatshirt. Um, that like beaver chipmunk looking thing apparently was a kicker. And my mom was like, oh, I bet, you know, I bet Dom's going to become a kicker when he grows up. And funny enough, uh, I did in college. So super random, super odd. Um, but yeah, welcome all again uh, to Seattle U. And then David, you can hit the next slide. Did you want to do the poll? Oh, oh my gosh. I forgot about the poll. Oh, yes. We have a poll of six questions uh, we'd like to ask to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, we'll give you a couple of minutes to answer the questions and then uh, we'll look at the results. So let me share the poll right now. There we go. So you can get started answering those six questions. All right, I give everybody about one more minute to answer those six questions and then we're going to share the results.
Right, we're gonna check them out. <clears throat> okay. So first question is, uh, would you rather swim in the ocean or hike in a mountain? Uh, very close, almost a tie here. Swim in the ocean is 59% and hike in a mountain is 41%. Uh, for me personally, I don't like water, <laughs> so I definitely prefer to hike in a mountain. But Dominic, you like water a lot, don't you? Yeah, I'm going surfing tomorrow, so I'm hoping the mm -hmm. water is a bit warmer than I think it's going to be. That's good. All right, question two. Would you rather have a time machine that only goes back in time or one that can go only forward in time? Uh, back in time is more popular, I guess. Um, and if you could go back to back in time, what would you want to see? Um, I always feel like it would be fun to go to the Americas, like before European settlers got here, see what, what that world looked like. That's cool. But yeah, I'm always back in time, not forward in time. Forward to me is scary. <laughs> so. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, does anybody in the room know uh, what this picture is of or uh, what show it's from? Can you name the, the TV show or the time machine, the name of the time machine? Yay, we yes, have Doctor Who. <laughs> also, David, great. That's a good name. <laughs> Um, and then the name of the time machine is the TARDIS. Yes. So, right. Next question. Are you an early bird or a night owl? All right. A lot more popular for being a night owl. <laughs> Staying so up those of you who are early birds, those eight o'clock classes usually don't fill up. So, <laughs> so it's a boon for you all. Yeah. I remember when I was in college, I used to be a night owl, but now I'm an early bird. So <laughs> it may change. I'm team night owl forever. Oh, okay. Number four, what would you most be interested in doing in Seattle on a weekend? So there's lots of fun activities to do in Seattle. Uh, here are a few activities. Uh, going to Bainbridge Island. I know someone's from Bainbridge Island. So that's a great place to go. Uh, Pike Place Market, the Seattle Aquarium, and the International District. Uh, let's see. Looks like first choice is International District. A lot of great food there. And then second would be Pike Place Market. Also a lot of great food there as well. And um, just a lot of vendors and great place to, to check things out. So if you are not from Seattle and haven't been here yet, um, these are some of the places that we'd recommend that you go visit. Okay, number five, what is your favorite type of food? Mm -hmm. uh, American, Mexican, Italian, Chinese, or uh, Vietnamese or Indian. Lots of options here. Uh, looks like Mer uh, Mexican is number one, followed by Chinese and then Italian and then American. So a good mix. All right, and then last question is what gives you energy? Interesting, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all need our sleep. Um, for me, it's exercise, so... Um, if I ever feel tired or need some energy, I'll go for a run or go to the gym. Yeah, being around friends is also great. Listening to music, they're all good options for giving you energy. All right, thank you all for participating. We're gonna go to the next slide now. All right, so, so we're gonna jump from getting to know you all a little bit to talking about academics. So. Um, so if you're here tonight, you are an Albers student, you're part of the Albers School of Business and Economics, and you are probably majoring in either one of the areas of business or in pure economics. Um, so, and if you're not sure yet, it's very, very common for students to start knowing that they're interested in business, but not exactly sure what direction you want to go. Um, so here are all of your options for majors. We, you can do accounting, analytics, uh, business economics. Uh, which has a focus in business, but then a smaller focus in economics. Um, the business and law program, which lets you start law school one year early. Uh, finance, we do have an individualized major. So if you know you want to do business and you're interested in something you don't see on this list, there might be a way to craft your own major. 
Um, and we also offer management and marketing. And then some of you might be majoring in the Bachelor of Arts in, in economics, which will not include all of the business classes and just has a focus on economics. And if you're not sure, it's totally fine. And also if you would like to change from what you originally said, that's usually fine as well. So, so I'd say, don't worry too much. Your first quarter classes are not gonna be too dependent on your major within business. Um, if you're not sure you wanna do business, maybe let us know that because that might change some of your classes. Yeah, and also I'd like to plug in that a lot of students end up doing a double major. Um, it's very, uh, easy to do that within Albers. Um, so if you're considering a second major, just talk to one of us. And we also offer minors in most of these areas and, and also in a few additional areas. So so if you're at this point, it's great to be really open um, and you can talk about all of those possibilities and add them on once you're once you're on campus. You don't have to really worry about that now, but just know those options are available. And also I wanted to uh, chime in because I forgot on my introduction slide. Um, each of us work with certain departments within Albers. So for example, I'm, you're probably assigned by major right now to your academic advisor. Um, I currently work with accounting, finance, and business and law. However, university advising is actually growing this year and we'll have more team members. So your assigned advisor might change, which is totally okay. Um, but just know you can always meet with any of us to, no matter what your major is. And for now, for the summer, um, you'll have an assigned advisor and you're definitely welcome to reach out to us with any questions. You should have gotten an email to your SU email account with the name of your advisor. Um, and also, if you're not sure, just feel free to, we'll put our, our general email in the chat as well. And then you can always reach out to us that way and, and ask. Um, so we wanted to give you just a quick breakdown of how the how the university degree works and what goes into it, because as you choose your first quarter classes, you're really you're kind of starting the foundation of your degree. And sometimes students are wondering, like, why are these the classes we're choosing? Um, so we just want to give you a really quick overview. And there'll definitely be other opportunities for you to get more in, in depth with this information uh, once you're on campus. So at the kind of the base of your degree, you have your UCOR classes, which are what we call like general education or distribution classes at Seattle U. And those are gonna be pretty consistent no matter what your major is. So if you have a friend who's, you know, a psychology major or um, an art major, you know, they're gonna also be taking these UCOR classes. And those classes have a really wide uh, range of topics. So everything from like your college English, to a natural science, an art class. That's also where you're gonna see the Jesuit mission of the school really coming through. There's gonna be one theology, actually two theology classes. There's a, a philosophy class along the way. Um, so that's really where we make sure that your education is kind of consistent no matter what you major in, that you're getting a, you know, a Seattle U education. And as you start out, we'll show you another slide in a minute, but as you start out, the UCOR is really kind of where you concentrate at the beginning. Um, but if you're really excited about business, that's great because you can see that's going to be the bigger, a bigger chunk of your education. And it just not in that first quarter, but pretty soon you're going to be taking mostly business classes. So anybody who's majoring in any of the business majors, most of your degree will be in the business foundation, which gives you an exposure to all of the majors um, and a chance to kind of build a really broad um, business education. And then your major, so if you've chosen, let's say you've chosen marketing or finance, that's gonna be about five or six classes that you take, usually like junior and senior year, that's going to give you that focus. And so if you are, if you're pre-business currently, or if you have chosen a major, but you're not completely sure about it, again, that's totally fine because you're gonna be working on these foundation classes for quite a while. And those are consistent for all of the business majors. And then depending on where you come in, um, like what your preparation is in math, um, you'll have a certain number of general electives, usually two to four classes that you'll take. Uh, we often, general electives are just classes that you take to reach the minimum uh, credit requirement to graduate. So they can be any class. Um, people might use them to like, complete a minor or to just take a fun class in another department or sometimes on study abroad, people might take some fun classes. Um, so they're very, very flexible. 
And there are just a few of them. So we usually encourage you to, to wait on those until you're further along in your program so you kind of know um, how you want to use those. All right, now we're going to talk about the math requirement. Um, so all uh, Bachelor of Arts and Business Administration majors uh, require the completion of business calculus, which is Math 1130, um, except for the accounting major. Um, for accounting majors, uh, it's required to complete Math uh, 1024 or 1026, which is Advanced Algebra. So for accounting majors, uh, you'd be taking Advanced Algebra and don't need to take Business Calculus. However, if you are considering on double majoring uh, in accounting in another major, or if uh, you're thinking of switching out of accounting to a different uh, business major, uh, then you uh, would want to consider taking uh, business calculus because that will be a requirement for you. Uh, for the uh, Bachelor of Arts in Economics, uh, it's required to take Calculus 1, which is Math 1334. Um, however, it is highly recommended to take a year of calculus uh, so you continue on taking Math 1335 and then 1336. Um, also, depending on your Alex Math Placement Assessment, uh, you may be taking uh, additional math classes before uh, you complete uh, Business Calculus or Calculus 1. So you'll want to take your Alex Math Assessment as soon as possible if you haven't done so already. Um, you know, ideally, it would be done before your registration session in July. So that way, uh, your advisor, we can help you uh, choose the right class for you uh, in your first quarter. Uh, if you have any uh, college level math uh, completed, uh, also make sure that you have your official uh, transcript to, uh, submitted to admissions at CLU so that uh, your transcript can be evaluated uh, for math placement. So we're going to stop here for a minute and see if anyone has questions at this time about anything that we've discussed or about the math requirements. Uh, and then we'll move on after we've answered some questions. I think you may, so somebody just asked, how do you know if the transcript gets to you? I think you, there may be, you may be notified. I feel like somebody told me that recently. Um, you can also check with us, um, but the way that you'll know once your transcript has been evaluated is in um, in my Seattle U student planning, there's a program evaluation. So I think your uh, orientation modules talk you through my Seattle U and how to use it. Um, and in your program evaluation, if you have earned college credit, once it's evaluated, it will show up there and as it will show you what uh, classes those credits are fulfilling. So that's really kind of the best way to, to know. Um, but if you're just wondering if it's been in, um, received, I think you could check with your admissions counselor or with one of us and we could let you know. And then someone asked, asked if you can retake a class even if you've already received it as college credit. You certainly can. Like if you, let's say you, you know, have college credit like for macroeconomics, but you're like, I think I've forgotten a lot and I really wanna retake it you're welcome to. Um, you might want to just have a conversation with an advisor before you choose to do that, just to make sure that that's the right choice. But yeah, you're, you're most, the most recent time you take the class will always be the one that counts. So um, you're, you're definitely welcome to retake things. All right, we're going to go on to the next slide. And then if you have any more questions, uh, we're happy to answer them later. So here, this slide is a little overwhelming, um, but this is a kind of, and don't worry about understanding all the details of it, but this is a rough breakdown of the four-year plan, um, and it's color-coded by type of class. So you'll see that a lot of the first year is blue, and that's mostly going to be U-Core classes, kind of general classes, um, again, counting toward those, those kind of fundamental parts of your degree. Um, and you really do hit that hard in your first year. Um, but then green is your business classes, and you'll see there are a couple sprinkled in there. Um, and you may, depending on kind of your individual situation, some people by spring quarter are taking a couple of business classes. 
And then you see by your second year, you'll definitely be taking majority business classes. So anybody who's a little bit like really wanting, wanting to get started in business, you'll probably have a business class your very first quarter. Um, and then by spring quarter, you'll probably be, probably be taking multiple business classes by that point. Um, and you can see, I think sometimes students feel that the UCOR, like there's a lot of UCOR and it, I think it feels like that in your first year, but by the time you hit the second year, there's really, for most people, only about um, five or six UCOR classes left. So it really tapers off and you get much more deeply into your major uh, pretty quickly. Awesome. And um, not last but not least, but um, kind of the next overall steps. Um, three things that we um, probably should have done, but if we haven't, isn't the end of the world, we can figure it out. Um, make sure to check your uh, Seattle University email regularly. Uh, the reason is, is that's the primary form of communication here. And that's how we reach out to all of our students that's how all of our students get into contact with us. We're really good about responding pretty quickly um, and resolving any issues over email. So make sure to check all the important information that you'll ever need will be on there. Um, the second will be uh, signing up, which you guys have probably already done for a registration session in July. Um, those will start in two weeks. Um, and if you haven't or have no idea what I'm talking about, be sure to ask and we can help you get signed up there. And then lastly is just kind of reiterating uh, um, the Alex math play placement exam. So make sure that we have any transcripts um, that need to be submitted or anything like that. If you Again, if you have questions, if you're not sure where the status of that is yet, um, you can always reach us to reach out to us or the admissions counselor. Um, and then kind of piggybacking off of that. So any transcripts that you might have um, with AP, IB, or uh, college transfer credits. We just need to make sure are submitted. Um, now is a good time too, if you haven't, because it'll probably, you know, give you some time within two weeks to register so we know what classes that you're going to need. Um, and then the, the next thing is just, just to keep, keep up on those online orientation modules. Uh, they're very detailed and very helpful and usually answer a lot of questions that students may have. Um, so make sure that you keep on top of that. Um, and then what we're going to go over next is through your course planning on your My Seattle U account um, is adding kind of the recommended classes, um, which is the Intro to Business class, BUAD 1000, uh, the UCore Module 1 courses that we kind of discussed, and then the math based off of the Alex exam. Yeah, so in student planning, uh, you should see a calendar similar to this, uh, where you can plan your uh, courses out uh, and see the days and times that the classes are offered. So in your first quarter, you're most likely going to be taking a math class, uh, two UCORs, and BUAD 1000. So that'd be a total of 17 credits, because uh, BUAD 1000 is a two credit class, uh, which only meets for uh, five weeks. So in this uh, schedule, uh, there's a UCOR 1100, uh, UCOR 1400, Math 1130, and BUAD 1000. Um, and it is recommended if you haven't taken any um, college level writing classes to take a uh, UCOR 1100 in your first quarter or as soon as possible. And then one, one more note, it, it's important or it, it will help your, your registration go faster if in addition to choosing which classes kind of generally you want to take, like I want to take, you know, calculus, I want to take UCOR 1100, that you also go to the next step and you choose exactly which sections. So a section is um, one, you know, I guess one portion of that class, but that has like a specific day, time and professor. Um, and so, and you like you'll need to choose the sections before you can register, um, because there'll be lots of options within each category. And so that part can be kind of time consuming to look through. Like for UCOR 1100, there are many different meeting times for that class, and there are also many different topics. 
And so you're going to want to look through and choose like the topic that most interests you and then possibly a backup one as well, um, especially if the first one you choose is kind of uh, is a low number like near the beginning of the list, because those will tend to go a little bit faster. Um, so you might want to have a couple of options of topics that seem interesting to you. Um, but that part is a little bit time consuming in planning your schedule. So if you can come prepared to the session with that done, then usually you can finish your registration really quickly. All right, now we'll go back to some of the questions in the chat box. And I'll put the login to my Seattle U in the chat. And if you haven't had a chance to log into that yet, you can you can try that out. Um, I think you have instructions in the orientation modules about how to log in if it's the first time. Um, but that's where you would do all of this planning for registration and then where you'll actually register for your classes. And I'll send the um, Albers general inbox email. Um, it doesn't, so within each category, so say within UCOR 1100, it doesn't matter which subject you choose, they all fulfill the same requirement. And you only have to take one. So sometimes people will be, get excited and want to take multiple ones. You just really need to take that class one time um, and that will fulfill the requirement. And there were a couple of questions earlier on, should you study for the math placement test? That's a really great question. Um, the Alex placement test is actually structured so that you can go ahead and take it. And then if you feel like the score you get doesn't reflect well your math preparation, it will actually pinpoint areas you need to review and give you modules to help you review those topics. And then you can take it again. So I'm not sure it really that you really need to study before the first time you take it, but the test itself will like allow you to study and then repeat it if you want to. And then is the Red Hawk launch orientation mandatory? Um, I believe some parts of orientation are mandatory and there might be some that are optional. So it should in your, um, in your admissions portal, hopefully it's pretty clear which things you have to do and which things might be optional. And we have a question, where can you upload final high school transcripts? Um, so I'm guessing those are probably sent by your school. Um, we generally need official transcripts um, eventually. So if you're, yeah, if you're not sure though, I think that would be a good question for your admissions counselor, not exactly how you do that. Somebody just said they should be sent by your high school counselor. So I do think that's the typical process. Um, and if somebody told you differently, feel free to check in with us and we can we can try to help you troubleshoot. Should we, do you wanna share the, um, the math placement yeah. um, slide? We can go over that. Oops. I think a lot of people may need to still send a final high school transcript just because some classes just finished up. Um, but I think you're right, it's usually sent by your counselor. And if you've taken college classes, those need to be sent directly from the college that you, um, that you attended, even if that college was offering classes in your high school. Um, if they're just on your high school transcript, we can't grant you credit for the college classes. Um, and you can almost always do that by going to that college's website and just like Googling, you know, Bellevue College transcripts, and that will take you to a page that will let you order a transcript. And it's a really, it's usually a pretty easy process to do that. So if you do have college credit and you haven't done that yet, please do make sure to do that um, soon so that we can get that credit assigned to you and we'll know what classes you don't need to take in your first quarter. It looks like there's a question about uh, an ideal score for business majors on the Alex exam. Do you guys have any suggestions? There really isn't. Yes. So I know that uh, the score of um, less than 50 on the Alex placement would place students into math 1023. Uh, a less than 65, higher than 50, and less than 65 would place you into math 1024. 
and then high, uh, 65 or higher would place you into business calculus. So I guess ideal, if you know, to avoid taking any preparation classes, you would need a 65 or higher on Alex. Um, so somebody asked if you can wait to send transcripts because you're taking a class in the summer. Um, you certainly can, but just keep in mind that like your program evaluation won't reflect the classes you've already taken until we have the transcript. So you could decide to send one now to get those classes into your record and then just send another one at the end of summer once that class is over. Um, or you can wait to send them um, at the end of summer. And in that case, uh, before you register, we'll want to review an, an unofficial transcript to help you kind of choose classes that are definitely not classes you've already taken um, for your first quarter. So somebody just asked, when is the last day to take the Alex placement test? I think that there is a set deadline that they would like you to, to take it by for orientation. I'm not sure what that deadline is, but the main thing would be before you come to your group registration session, having that test score will then allow you to know which math class to take. So I think in some ways that deadline is going to vary depending on which session you've signed up for. So just make sure you've completed it. Um, and maybe give yourself a few days so that if you if you don't like your first score and you want to be able to study a bit and take it again, you have some time to do that um, before you meet with us again to register for your classes. So that'll be in, I think, starting in about a week and a half on July 8th, um, but some of you might be doing it the following week as well. Uh, the math test is online and you should have access to it through your admissions portal. And there's a question, how do you want us to submit our transcripts for high school to get the credits for college? So it depends on what your situation is. If, you, if you've if you taken college level classes, um, then the, the credit is granted through a university or a college. And so to get credit for those, you'll need to contact that university or college and have them send us a transcript directly. Um, and again, you can usually just do that on their website. You don't actually have to like talk to somebody there. It's pretty easy to do that. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. And it um, looks, and, oh. oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh yeah, for AP classes, you would need to contact College Board and have them send the scores to us. It looks like from the student's view on the new student checklist that they recommend having the Alex done. Uh, it looks like the due date, the prioritized due date is tomorrow. Um, but maybe if you could just prioritize it before the reg workshop. Yeah. 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 So don't panic. If it's not yeah. done tomorrow, you can still do it. Um, but do just make sure you take it before you come to register because it's sort of frustrating for you if you can only register for some of your classes and you have to wait. Ah, great question. If you took a college class through Seattle University, we should have that. <laughs> so you don't need to send a transcript. But do make sure to mention that when you're registering, just we'll want to double check to make sure it's showing up in the right place on your program evaluation so that you know which classes to avoid. So for class registration, um, at this point, you're not going to register yet. We would just like you to do that, that preparation work, um, which is in my Seattle U. 
um, to look kind of look at the options, add the classes to your to your plan, and think about like which sections of the classes you want to take. Um, once you've done that, then you'll be ready for the group registration session. And those, there's a link to sign up for those that's in your admissions portal. Um, I think it says like academic planning, something like that. And you, um, and it's the same right next to where you signed up for this session tonight. So you've, you've very likely already signed up for one and they would be in a couple of weeks. Um, and then at those sessions, you'll actually be, you'll actually register for your classes and then you should be all set for fall at that point. Um, I think there is a deadline for counselors, although, you know, if it comes in a little bit after that, it's probably fine, but really kind of as soon as classes wrap up and you're, you know, you're, you've graduated, then um, it's not going to change after that. So they should be able to go ahead and send it, send it. They probably in a lot of cases have already sent them, but I think we generally like to get them by early July. Yeah, so for the registration sessions, there's going to be about 12 students per session, uh, but then there'll be breakout rooms with the advisor in each room, and you'll be uh, with the advisor one-on-one. Um, -on -one. So you can talk about registration with that advisor uh, in the breakout room. And if you will be bringing in like substantial college credit from AP classes or college classes you've taken, I think we've said more than about 25 credits. Um, it would be better for you to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment just because we do have to go through and check to make sure you're taking the right classes. So um, so I guess if that's not an option for you in the admissions portal, let us know and we can we can get that fixed. Anyone else have additional questions? These are good questions, so keep asking. And if you don't have a question right now and you think of one later after the session, you can always email us um, individually or uh, in the general inbox. Yeah, so if you do, like, I guess you should probably just follow, as far as what meetings to schedule, you should follow what's in your admissions portal at this point, um, because if you need a group registration session, there's a link there. If you do need an individual session, there should be a link there as well. Um, and then we put our email, um, the general email in the chat a little bit earlier, we can put that in again. So if you're not, if you're wanting to reach out to a specific person, but you're not sure how, feel free to just email the group, um, the group email, and we will get back to you. We put it in twice. Now you've gotten it lots of times. And if you're not sure if you need which type of appointment you should make, feel free to email us and we'll we'll help you sort that out. And then once you're on campus, like we are really generally pretty available. So you'll be seeing you'll be seeing lots of us um, and we can help you with kind of all sorts of different you know questions about what classes to take, questions about how to how to get started in college, how to um, you know, how to settle in, how to get involved, how to do well in your classes. So uh, there's quite a bit of support available and we're, you know, we're pretty accessible. Um, if you took two Dual enrollment classes, most likely 10 credits.
Um, so like any amount of credit or no credit is totally fine. But if you did have, I think, I think this year we're saying 25 credits or more, we would want to talk with you one-on-one -on -one just to make sure um, that we can check to, that you're taking the right classes in your first quarter. Um, and sometimes I've been meeting with some students like this week, we might get you a schedule that's set and then you can go ahead and register during the group sessions um, as well. So, but it's just, if you have, you know, if you just have a couple of classes, we can probably quickly, you know, help you sort that out during the group session. If you have multiple classes, it's probably good to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment just to make sure that, um, that you have a good plan for that first quarter. I have a question. Um, I got a direct message asking how to change majors um, because a student would like to change from pre-business to business analytics. I think there's some additional requirements there as well. Is that correct? There are, but if you want um, admissions to consider you for analytics instead of for pre-business, you can update your application in the admissions portal. And there should be a link that just says update my application and you click on that and you can choose a new major. And then if you're eligible for analytics, they will make that switch. And if they won't, um, you don't, you know, you don't, don't worry about it. You can um, potentially switch later after you've started. Um, if you have 45 credits from Running Start, you'll probably be bringing in 45 credits. Um, so definitely make sure to, to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment so we can help you um, kind of see how those classes are coming over and help you choose your classes for the first quarter. Um, and for adding minors, you actually can't add a minor yet. You have to wait until you're on campus. Um, and, and you can actually add minors like throughout your four years. Some people add them senior year. Um, so there's no hurry. Um, but definitely something to bring up with your advisor, maybe when you meet in the fall that you're interested in a minor and um, how to get started with that. And yeah, depending on the minor, if it's something like if it's a language or if it's something where it would make sense for you to start taking the classes right away, um, just you can bring that up when you register with the advisor you talk with and just we can help you make sure that 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 it makes sense to get started on that those classes in your first quarter. So I think if you've reported that you're, you have a certain number of college credits, then in your admissions portal where you scheduled like this session, it will also give you an option to make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with, with a, the appropriate advisor. And so if you're not seeing that, go ahead and email us and we'll, we'll help you get that sorted out. And then can I take electives in my first quarter? In some cases, that makes sense. But in a lot of cases, because you have so few electives as a business student, the business major is big. And so it takes most of your classes. Um, so often you're going to want to hold on to those for, for something later. But if there's something in particular you're really interested in, um, that, you know, definitely in your registration session, you can ask about that and, and we can help you decide if it makes sense to take it in your first quarter. I got another good question. Um, I have a student that's interested in seeing like um, four year course plans. Do we know where that is on the new website? I feel like we, so, so just so you all know, we just updated our website. And so we're still learning how to find things. Um, I know we got an email about that and I'm trying to remember. Good question, by the way. Yeah, that's a great question. We do have four-year plans for all of the majors. Just trying to remember where they are. Okay, we are currently working with orientation to get those four-year plans added to okay. the Canvas page that houses the advising modules. So you should have access to them soon, but I think it maybe you don't quite have access to them just yet. 
So yeah, great question. We are working on that so that you'll be able to, con to consult those if you'd like. You all have had some really good questions. So if there aren't any more questions, we can, can let you all go and get on with your evening. Um, but do feel free to reach out to us at that general email or directly to an advisor. Um, and, you know, we're happy to just kind of stay in touch with you throughout the summer and, and answer questions as they come up. Um, let's see, somebody is not sure which major they picked. If you log into my Seattle U um, and go to student planning and then go to your program evaluation, that will show you what your major is. I'll just put that in the chat really quick too. And uh, to the student that asked that, you're actually my assigned advisee and I just looked it up. You are a pre-business, so you haven't necessarily declared yet, which is okay. Uh, 